Hey guys, it's Lauren. Welcome or welcome back. Today I am starting a new series on my channel and it is a brand specific purchase or pass. So we're starting off with Fenty Beauty today where I go through Fenty's product catalog of the products that I haven't already tried from the brand and let you know my thoughts on them just you know, based upon first impression, whether they interest me, whether they don't. And that's kind of something that I do in my new makeup release series, but this is going to be brand specific. So I hope you guys enjoy it. If you have any recommendations for a brand you want me to do in a future brand specific purchase or pass, I'd love to hear your recommendations in the comments. But we're getting to it. I will have all products that I'm mentioning linked in the description box down below. Keep in mind, I have not tried any of these products, but I will have links down below. Any link that's an asterisk beside it is an affiliate link. So if you decide to purchase a product using that link, I can make a Mission off of your purchase. It's no extra cost to you, but I like to always be upfront about that and let you guys know. But with that being said, let's go ahead and get into the video. First, I want to talk about the Snap Shadows eyeshadow palettes. These are kind of like mix and match six pan palettes. I believe they retail for $25 a piece. And these, when they first dropped, I was so drawn to them because I feel like a lot of people were because it was kind of the logical next step for Fenty. They've come out with a lot of products and I've tried, you know, probably five of their products and really enjoyed most of them. So I really did want to try these eyeshadow palettes when I first saw them. They were smaller. There was like multiple color schemes of these palettes that were really calling my name, specifically number six, Smokey. That one really caught my attention and still really does. Even like I went in store one day and almost bit the bullet on that one, almost got it. And I still am very attracted to it I definitely want to try it at some point but then there are also two other color schemes that kind of like call my name which is one true neutrals and then also two cool neutrals so there's three different color schemes that I could see myself purchasing from this little line however the only thing that's kind of mm, holding me back a little bit is that when they first came out the reviews were not that great and they're still they're not horrible I haven't seen any that's like you don't ever buy these or whatever but I also really don't I haven't really seen anyone being like, you should definitely buy these. I've never really seen someone put these in a favorites video or a holy grail video, or at least someone who I really trust. So I don't know. I just, I really like the color schemes and I could see myself definitely purchasing them at one point. So they definitely lean more on the purchase side than the past, but also I don't know if I really need them and I don't know how good they'd be. So when Fenty first launched, they came out with a bunch of different products at that, you know, first release date. And I remember going in store when my store had first gotten Fenty Beauty in. Like I remember coming in and they were still kind of setting up the display for the products. And I did end up picking up one of their Kilowatt Freestyle Highlighters. I liked it okay, but I feel like the thing that was really promoted the most or that people were talking about the most when Fenty Beauty first came out in like 2017 was the foundations and rightfully so it was a very inclusive shade range um, and I'm so glad at that because I feel like it did really kick off something in the industry. I know brands had been doing inclusive shade ranges before but I feel like this kind of just you know set a standard for the industry and I think that's so cool so I'm so glad that this launch was successful and that so many people are able to use this foundation. And I knew, I knew, you know, it's a matte foundation. I'm very particular with my matte foundations. I have dry skin and it's, you know, I'm very picky with my formulas. I want something that's definitely targeted towards dry skin or at least normal. And this one is recommended for normal skin, but I feel like the primary, you know, emphasis is for people with oily skin and combination skin. And it even says on the Sephora's page, like now it says recommended for, and it does not include dry skin anywhere. It's not dry skin friendly. So I'm glad that I, I wasn't, I hate to be rude to myself, but like I wasn't dumb enough to pick this up because I mean I was seeing it everywhere I I have a feeling I definitely wanted to purchase it but something kicked in and was like no it's not for you but I am glad that it was so successful for the reasons that I mentioned and I'm also very glad that I did not I have a bullet on that one and pick it up. So next I want to talk about the Pro Filter Instant Retouch Concealer. This is a $26 product and I believe this product you know my views are very similar to my views of the foundation because when this first launched, you know, so many people were talking about it. There were so many reviews on it and I was very clearly able to see a divide between the people who liked it and the ones who didn't. And it seemed like the people who liked the foundation were enjoying this concealer for the most part. And the ones who didn't enjoy the foundation weren't really enjoying this concealer. And that's because the finish was also matte with this concealer and me knowing, you know, my preferences, knowing the creators that I watch that have similar preferences to me, a similar, you know, skin type to me, they weren't loving it because I think, you know, those creators kind of are similar to me in that they like a more natural finish concealer, one with more of a satin finish rather than a matte one like this one. So I was able to also identify with this one, which I'm very proud of myself for because, 
even now I have trouble, you know, identifying what is meant for me and what is not like, you know, separating, you know, the hype of a product with what's going to be good for me. And so I'm surprised that I was able to do it back then even. But this concealer, I was able to know it's really not for me. It's not, um, you know, the launch for me. There's other things that I can try out from the brand and I'm glad that I was able to see that. Next, I want to talk about the new cream products that Fenty has released. I mean, they're relatively new, but the first one is the Cheeks Out Freestyle Blush, and then I'll talk about the cream bronzer in a second, but the cream blush is, I believe, $20, and I found this price to be very reasonable. You know, you're not getting a ton of product in comparison to the bronzer. I believe you're getting, like, half the amount, but the price seems decent. I don't use cream blush that often, so if I were to purchase one, I wouldn't want a ton of product in it because then, you know, it's just going to go bad anyway, and Fenty is a brand that I do really enjoy so I did I I am in like if I were to try a cream blush from you know Sephora or a higher end brand this would definitely be the one I would go for especially because there's one shade in particular that is calling my name which is cool berry it just looks like a really pretty mauvey pink shade that I think would be very flattering for my skin tone I've been using cream blushes a little bit more often so if I were to pick up one of the two like one of the two cream products this would definitely be the one I would pick up now the bronzer um is a $32 product which is kind of pricey now you do get way more than you get with the cream blush and that makes sense because you're going to go through a cream bronzer faster than a cream blush you're just going to need more product when it comes to you know working on the face now cream bronzers I'm, i don't love as much i'll use them occasionally but i don't think i could constitute purchasing a 32 dollar like i just don't think i could justify purchasing a 32 dollar bronzer um and i know that the when i think about like the price the milk bronzer is I believe $28 and that's you know a beloved I don't know how like the price per gram compares but I know that that bronzer is a beloved bronzer and it for that being you know what is it like four dollars less I feel like that would be the one that I would go for especially because it is in a stick and I feel like stick bronzers even though they're cream are a little bit easier to work with when it comes to something that's in a compact as far as like the bronzer goes just because I feel like it would be easier you know rather than you know getting your brush dipping it in I don't know why that way but I just am now Maybe one day I'll want to try this. This will get incredible reviews, but I really haven't seen anything that's been like, you have to try this. So I don't really foresee myself picking that one up. That's probably a pass. My opinion on this next one might surprise some of you guys because I feel like I don't normally talk about products like this in a positive light. But the next product is the Diamond Bomb All Over Diamond Veil. This is a $39 like highlighter, and this is the one that's in the compact in the shade how many carrots they do have another shade um but it's like more of a bronzy kind of um tan definitely a shade that's for more deeper complexion this one is almost like an icy white type of shade which it's interesting because I have found that I really do love highly concentrated like glittery highlighters for very special occasions where there's not a lot of like pigment to them. It's more just kind of that glitter. You can kind of center them in like one section um, on the face or in a few sections on the face to kind of add like something a little bit just cool. I, I do like that for certain occasions. It's definitely not an everyday thing. It's definitely not for a special event. Well, maybe like a special event, but not like a fancy occasion or anything. Um, I do like that look on occasion. Now, would I be able to justify purchasing a $39 product that I would only use on certain occasions? No. But I do like that this is different from others, and this is something that isn't like all of the other highlighters in my collection. So it does kind of call my name a little bit. This is one that I could see in a, you know, world where I had all the money. I would definitely purchase this. So the next one I want to talk about is the Full Frontal Volume Lift and Curl Mascara. It's the only mascara on their line. This is a $24 product. And with higher end mascaras, I've just found that over the years, I've become increasingly more hesitant when it comes to purchasing higher end mascaras that are, you know, over $20 or really even, you know, $15 at this point because there's so many from the drugstore that I've tried that I absolutely love for $10 or less. Well, actually, the L'Oreal Lash Paradise, my all-time favorite, is $11, but you guys know what I mean. Like, it's very rarely a time where I've tried a higher end mascara that is increasingly better than the drugstore ones and when you're paying double the price it's just a little bit more difficult to justify the purchase especially considering it's a product that you can only use from you know really for three to six months maybe a little bit longer if you're lucky but that's kind of pushing it it's a product that I feel like goes bad very fast so you know spending a lot of money on it just isn't as 
reasonable. And when I, you know, when I first started with makeup, I would have so many mascara wands open or tubes open. I would, you know, constantly be purchasing higher end mascaras, but now I'm just not that way anymore. And so this is one that unless it really volumizes, unless it really lifts and it really curls all at the same time, because there are plenty of mascaras that I find can do that even from the drugstore. I mean, plenty. So you know, if it really exponentially changed the look of my lashes, then of course I'd want to try it. But I really haven't seen that incredible reviews enough to make me want to purchase this product. So it's probably on the past side. Alright guys, that wraps up today's video. If you enjoyed it, I would love if you would give it a thumbs up. And let me know in the comments down below what brands you want me to do this video on in the future. I'd love to hear your recommendations or anything else you want to say. I love chatting with you guys and interacting with you in the comments. If you're new here and you haven't already subscribed, I would love if you would do so before you go. And if you would like to be notified whenever I upload in the future, future, definitely click the bell icon that is next to the subscribe button. But thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it and I hope you know how much all of the love and support means to me. I hope that you guys are having a good day and I hope you have a great couple of days until my next video goes live and I will see you when it does. Bye guys!